All right, Candace, the protector of many things. She's a sentinel who can be flexible, who can also be a little skeptical. But if you put her on a pedestal, she'll destroy you to a decimal, including your precious gem. Elemental skill <laughs> block because I can't say the <laughs> D word on this platform. Candace, not me, does not condone couples. She works hard to protect her village every day, but you're telling her that people who have nothing to do with her outside of her own village? No, the nation is having a public relationship? How dare they? Candace will travel across the lands just to <laughs> block everyone because that shit's unfair. That's your girlfriend? Not anymore. <laughs> a Fatui agent having a nice time with a mirror maiden? Maidenless now. Oh wow, you're just doing this yourself. Wait, they're real players. I, I can't attack them. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Fools! Get the shit out of here! The durability of the shield is based on Candace's max health, so Candace is more durable than the shield itself, which really questions why she even has a shield in the first place. This works very similarly as Yunjin's skill. Enemy who attacks the shield will get a bashing, and the damage is based on her strength, max HP. But unlike Yunjin, there's unfortunately only one charge level. Speaking of blocking, this video is sponsored by Nork VPN, the best VPN for your online gaming security. Imagine Candace browsing the web for very important and private things that were meant for her and her alone. Then this artifact tree named Dirte Hacker digs this disgustingly unfair luck-based roots into her data. And not only does it take a peek on her precious information, it sells it. What? Even I can't do that, said Candace as she looked into her own browser history that isn't to mine. Candace can protect herself from people with happy relationships, but she had no idea how to protect herself through the web. That's why she got a new shield called NordVPN. Not only does her new shield protect her from Dirte Hacker, not only does her new shield can now block happy relationships on a global scale, she can now turn off the shield and still be protected by any sort of scam this dirty hacker is trying to pull on you, like sending Candace a tempting message or sending her a tempting opportunity. All blocked! But that's not it. If you guys use my special link, you guys can get the exclusive NordVPN discount deal on a two-year plan plus four additional months free, risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Ha! Ah! Suck it, Dirty Hacker! Elemental Burst! Come forth, my millennial item! Let me see you when Hoyoverse will give a player a free guaranteed 5 star! Wow. Well, we have to name this, so let's think, guys. What makes your weapons naturally wet? And after coming up with 87 names, only one will not get me demonetized, so we shall call Candace's Burst Sweaty Hands. This shall be Candace's second <laughs> block for people who are attracted to her. It doesn't matter. Who said that? Candace lifts her spear up high to pray to her ancestor, whoever that is, to make her hands sweaty to the point where the team's claymore, polearm, and sword weapons deals sweat uh, hydro damage. So it's time for infusion battle. Chongboy's easy press skill versus Candace's 60 energy required burst. Who will win? What? Oh wait, maybe it's just the order. What? Ayaka's Diglett Infusion versus Candace's 60 energy required burst, which is like 50% of her kit. Who will win? What? Kaching's Electro Infusion versus Candace's 60 energy required burst, which is like 50% of her kit, and it's kind of like her strength and weakness at the same time. Who will win? What? Oh. That's not good. Bennett's friend zone pyro infusion that no one's going to unlock versus Candace's assist the engine required burst, which was like 50% of her kit, and it's kind of like a strength and weakness at the same time. So, over designed Candace, I hope your ice cream melts onto your hand every time you eat one for the rest of your life. Who will win? Ha ha! I'm gonna live forever! 
Whatever! Anyways, similarly to Yunjin, she also buffs the elemental damage of normal attacks in the team. Wow! Out of ideas now, are we? Not exactly. Let's say we have an ice cream. Yunjin's buff is a whipped cream called Normal Attack Buff, and the ice cream tastes good. Candace puts sprinkles called Elemental Damage of Normal Attack Buff, also tastes good. Both improve the taste in different ways, but if you put them together, <gasps> now, another major difference is while Yunjin's buffing can be improved by leveling her talent and defense, Candace's buff stays the same no matter how strong she is. Wait, that's split scaling. However, you dare block Candace! He's nuts. Candace may have that forever 20% buffing, but her passive comes in to make your day slightly less blocked. But we'll talk about that later, because we're not done with these sweaty hands yet. Candace. I was gonna say she does something something all over the floor, but since that description alone is just really disgusting, we'll just say her hand sweats like a fountain, cause that's definitely cleaner. This wave Candace creates with her sweaty hands deals AoE hydro damage. Yeah, no shit. You thought she was gonna do pyro damage? This AoE wave damage is based on her maximum HP, and she can create a total of three waves her burst. This can help with Bloom, Electro Charge, and some other reactions that her normal attack already is doing. Passives. Candace is an amazing warrior. You can tell because she's the only one smart enough to wield a shield when all these other losers only have one weapon. Passive 1. So I already talked about this uh, while I was explaining her skill because I didn't think they would waste her passive slot like this, but yeah, the counter thing is a passive. Passive 2. This is the important one. This passive increases your normal attack damage by 0.5% every 1000 HP that Candace has. Nice! Passive 3. Candace needs to climb the world to find couples to <laughs> block. Therefore, she has a climbing passive. So now let's go over her artifact equipment. For beginners, there is no 4 star artifact that raises your HP, but you go with this set for consistent sweaty hands. But if you already have that consistent sweaty hands covered by other characters, then you can go with this for heartbreaking accuracy, or you can go with this for jabbing vigorously, or you can run both so you can jab hearts vigorously with accuracy. Nice. For those who've progressed enough to submit yourself to the Artifact RNG Hell, for support as the descendant of the Crimson King who shares kindness to Unga Bunga teammates, the four-piece Noblesse Oblige is definitely for the best. Unless you already have a team member with the set. It raises the entire team's attack and her sweat fountain sprouts vigorously thanks to that 20% burst damage bonus. But if you wish to be a main DPS who block with style, the four-piece heart of I can't pronounce this word properly is the way to go especially when her sweaty hand ability lets you deal hydro damage with your normal attack and your charge attack. Or you can go with the two-piece fatter set or the two-piece I just talked about this 15 seconds ago set if you're just lazy to farm. For primary stats, support skill health points, hippie points, and literally relying on the passive at this point for her kit, but for warriors that wants to see her on the field for more than Xing Cho seconds, it's either HP or attack. If you want to go full normal attack that uses skill for energy, attack. Personally, I like using the massive block on other people, and I didn't see that big of a difference between the two, so, you know, it's not like attack Candace is like, and this route is more convenient for constellations as well. Same applies for the substats. Crit, HP, and a bit of ER to consistently block everyone. So now, let's go over sticks. 5 star weapons. This one is simply just the best for her damage, raises HP, crit, end of conversation. This one is a no. This one, you don't have. This one is aesthetically okay, but you probably put this for someone else, and even if you didn't, the ability that takes advantage of elemental mastery to buff attack that only helps Candice if built in a specific way is up to you. Basically, use something else. This one is decent for support, but in my opinion, some 4 stars were simply made better. You give this back to the owner. Shanglin. This one can help you with your nut jabbing journey, with crit rate to high base attack, and best of all, the spear gets to be held by someone tall. 4 stars. This one makes your hands sweaty every day, giving you energy just for jabbing them in the nuts. Best energy support weapon. This one's free, aesthetically not that bad, and has an ability that's actually kind of good for DPS Candace. This one, maybe, but you'll probably die of boredom before getting it, and if you have a free to play ride in, this is a no. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one is just DPS pole arms. 3 star weapons. The black tassel and the white tassel. This one raises your HP by quite a bit, but the ability is bad. This one raises your crit rate and has a pretty amazing ability. 
Oh, there's no buts. There's no cons for the white tassel. Teams, the most boring part of any of my videos. And the reason why this took me 17 rewrites just so it's less boring. Because I don't know how to make a joke out of a team other than their name. Guys, Candace's sweaty hands is not for everyone. Not everyone likes sweaty hands because it's the same as clammy hands and clams are ugly creatures that taste like rubber. Unfortunately, some people are into this. However, Candace is more specific than that. You see, her sweaty hands only work for normal attackers and there's only a handful of those in this end gameless world. But they do exist. Be that as it may, Candace is even more specific than that because her sweaty hands only sweats on sharp swords, long bull arms, and thick claymores. Probably could have chosen a better description for all of that, but again, only a child's handful of those is in this end gameless world. Literally one. Can you guess who it is? Yeah, the I was supposed to be the first Hydro Polearm guy. But you know what's crazy? He doesn't need a Candace, because his skill that uses normal attack damage is already infused with Hydro. Who did this? Who did this? But Jay, Nilu is coming out and she can use Candace. That's even worse! These demons separated them in two different banners! Hey Jay, actually, looking over Nilu's kit, she doesn't need Candace. Grab me. <laughs> what do you say, you what did I say about <laughs> fucking Candace? I'm gonna f so yes, Candace has a very unique kit, as you guys can all tell. So unique that she's not even mandatory for anyone. So let me explain that Nilu bit really quickly, because this isn't a Nilu guide. Uh, guys, Nilu can make this thing called Super Bloom. They're basically super versions of a normal bloom. She can only make these with full Hydro and Dendro units in the team. Any other element makes Super Bloom into Normal Bloom. And we don't want Normal Bloom, guys. They're, they're freaking normal. Like, we want Super. So let's say we put Nilu and Candace together. You know, Hydro Resonance, HP up, more buff, got the Hydro part covered. Now let's add in some grass. Oh wait, there's only three of them in the entire game. Well, I'm sure one of them is a healer. Oh wait, none of them are healers. So I guess we'll just add in a Kakomi or Barbara. Oh wait, but then why would we add Candace when this fish thing does everything for Nilu anyway? This, my friends, is what I like to call the prank by the assholes, also known as intentional design flaws. And when there's an intentional design flaw, in my objective opinion, it gives us the players to uh, tell whoever made her kit whenever they hold an ice cream, it will melt onto their pants without knowing, and when they stand up, it will drip into their shoes and their socks, giving them that uncomfortably sticky feeling in their feet until they get home. And while they're getting home, they like, you know, that, that sticky ice cream, ice cream shit, like, it, it, like, you know, a leaf falls into your shoe and it sticks onto your shoe and you can't take it off because you don't notice it until you get home. It gets really, really sticky to the point where the leaf just gets stuck on your shoe. You have to clean it up all day. Yeah, anyways, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, teams. You should all know by now what Hydro Reactions do. Vaporize, times 2 damage, electrocute, damage over time, freeze, freeze. For Vaporize, it's pretty obvious what you're gonna use, so I'm not even gonna go over that. But in case you are new to the game, this one creates a friend zone that buffs the crap out of you, and this one will do more damage than anyone in your team. This one takes advantage of your normal attack, this one is just better with this thing, and this one refuses to cooperate, but the normal attack buff kind of does work. Electrocute. If you don't know what that means, it's when people go <laughs> kind of how I feel inside whenever Hoiverse throws away good designs for bad kits. But you can pretty much use any Electro 4 stars. And a heads up on Candace's sweaty hands and her C6, it works with Sino's Burst. Who would have known? Especially when Raiden Shogun herself can't take advantage of any of these normal attack related stuff and they just let this dog boy do everything. Crazy, it's like this company has a thing for boys. With freeze! Enemies stand still, forever, as long as you keep applying these elements. But surprisingly enough, every 5 star cry unit probably doesn't really work as well as you thought. Maybe Chi Chi, maybe Ayaka, but you know, you probably just use charge attack and Candace doesn't do anything about that. 4 star cry units, however, actually work better with Candace, except for maybe Chung Yu, as he somehow overpowers Candace's 60 energy required burst with his 15 second cooldown E skill. Like, how does that even make sense? Crazy! It's like, this company has a thing for boys. Wait, Jay, so you're telling me that there isn't a single cryo auto-attacker? Yup. 
What about Aloy? I know what I said. When it comes to Candace DPS, I actually use the Freeze Team more often so than any of these other ones because she does big damage with her nut jabbing technique and energy was not really a problem thanks to the power of legs. And her blocking, of course, also deals big damage to the enemy physically and emotionally. We are nearing the end of this video and I have a confession to make before I end this. This entire time, guys, it wasn't Candace who was <laughs> blocking. It was me. I did it. I was blocking you the whole time. I called her kit disappointing to the point where I cursed the maker of her kit with melting ice cream for life. But calling a character bad is like almost a taboo when it comes to my videos. But I don't think it works because you guys are still watching the video. Then I said her shield is a blocker and her burst is sweaty hands, which are two very features that I possess that kept me single for years. But you guys are still watching. You guys are into that, you sick fuck. Then I said she jabs nuts vigorously. Nuts! She jabs nuts! Guys, she jabs those! You guys are into that? Then I said, uh, leave a like and subscribe to this video, uh, which, you know, which is very easy to do. And, and you guys are into that, you know, I, my god, I couldn't stop you there. Holy moly. And, and then I said, go follow me on Twitch, which is like in the description below. And I couldn't stop you there either. You guys are unstoppable. And then, I, and then I said, I have a Twitter and a Discord server too. I couldn't stop you there either. And then I said,